Hello everyone. Welcome to Almighty Tricks. So last class we have discussed about the time complexity and space complexity uh, chapter. Uh, so in that chapter actually we have discussed and we have uh, analyzed how a loop works and how many times uh, a loop works and we learn how to calculate the number of loops executing a for loop number of iteration we we calculated so uh, so in today's class basically we will be going to check how to calculate the time complexity and space complexity okay so let's get started okay so before going to the actual content uh, let me uh, explain you the execution time so so the execution time execution time okay so execution time basically what what is the meaning of execution time so let's say i have one algorithm let's say one algorithm i have okay so we have some codes okay and to to calculate the execution time we can do one thing here right we can have the start time and we can have the end time okay and finally what we can do end time minus start time so we'll get the execution time right we'll get the execution time well, let's take one example in a class there are two friends a and b and they have one assignment uh, to create one task uh, or to um, uh, write one algorithm write one algorithm which will do some some specific task okay specific task okay so they wrote this algorithm okay in different way they wrote a is a wrote in different way and b wrote different way but the output is coming correctly okay so now check so what a did a run this algorithm his algorithm in his machine which take which is taking 10 second okay b also running his algorithm in his machine which is taking 20 second okay now now b is uh, uh, wonder like why uh, edge algorithm is taking very less time and why my algorithm is taking long time so he b found so we found that A is, A is using some high-end PC to execute this algorithm, but B is using low-end PC. Okay. So so then B what B did? B purchased one high-end PC. Okay, similar to A. Okay. Now B's algorithm is taking only eight seconds to execute. Okay. But still a, a algorithm is 10 second okay now winner is eight uh, winner is b right now b wonder why my algorithm is taking lots of time but b's algorithm is a, taking eight second so he found uh, found like b is using uh, the code is c plus plus okay but a is using the code is python so generally uh, generally python is python is little bit slower than c plus plus okay then uh, so uh, so then what a did a wrote his algorithm in c plus plus now okay in c plus plus he wrote and now his algorithm is taking five seconds okay now winner is a because b's algorithm is taking eight second and uh, his algorithm is, is taking five seconds now we wonder why my algorithm is taking eight seconds why is his algorithm is taking five seconds now what he did a, a is found like sorry b is found like a is running his algorithm in very coolest uh, environment coolest environment means a is running his algorithm in five degrees celsius environment B is running his algorithm in 37 degrees Celsius environment. Okay, 
so from this let's let's not extend this story uh, so from from this story we will conclude like uh, so the execution time is uh, is not uh, depending on this one okay so it depends on various factor it may be some high end pc someone using it may be you know, some very good language or uh, any any other language okay and someone is running in very coolest environment or some some other factors so execution time is depending on the various factors so let's say one one algorithm is there that algorithm is currently it is running in 10 second but it is it is doesn't mean that it will it will run uh, 10 second every time it it may be different differ like 10.2 millisecond okay something like that it will always differ so exact time we cannot get so for that basically we need to uh, as, as we will not uh, calculate exact time so so in computer science we have the concept called type time complexity okay so time complexity basically we are going to uh, going to calculate the upper bound value what is upper bound value upper bound value we need to calculate okay so there is a concept called asymptotic uh, annotation sorry asymptotic analysis okay asymptotic analysis okay so what is the meaning of asymptotic analysis let's take one example okay i have one graph okay and i have one point let's say this is my point okay let's say this is x x point okay so and i have one value i have one value okay so this value basically what it is doing it is going like this okay going like this but if you observe but if you observe this this line is not coming to here okay it is always inside this space okay so so this is this line is called asymptote this line is called asymptote sorry this line is called asymptote okay so i'll take one example so um, so in asymptote analysis in asymptote analysis basically always we will be taking the always we will be analyzing the uh, value with a uh, large number of data large number of data okay and in asymptote is there is a there is a concept called bigo annotation So bigo annotation also known as upper bound. Okay. What is upper bound? The upper bound is let's say one example I have. Let's say my A is A value is like 15. Okay. And it is it should be in a boundary in between 20. Okay. So the upper bound is 20. As upper bound is 20 it will not from this a value is not a, anytime it will not consider greater than 20 it should it should be under 20 or it should be 20 okay it will not go beyond that okay so this is called the upper bound okay this is called upper bound so so bigo annotation also known as upper bound so in computer science in computer science we are we are going to uh, analyze the time complexity with the upper bound value okay always we will take one hypothetical uh, time and we will uh, we'll calculate the upper bound okay so uh, so let's so let's uh, uh, check how we can calculate this big o annotation okay big o big o annotation calculation Okay. So how we can calculate this big of annotation? 
let's say we have one for loop okay here we have some code okay so we need to find we need to find how many times this loop will execute so in the last class we have analyzed like oh, right we have uh, we have checked lots of example and we found how many times this loop will execute so similar way we need to find the uh, we need to calculate the number of iteration for a specific input okay so here the first point will be calculate number of iteration based on a input okay now second point i'll 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 i'm writing all these points then i'll explain okay the second point will be we need to ignore ignore lower order tab word order tab okay. third point will be we need to ignore the constants ignore constants value okay <coughs> sorry now now uh, let's take one example let's say i'm taking one example so uh, in the first step so step one this is the step one so in the step one i am i i found that this loop is executing <coughs> this many times let's say 4n plus 2 4n square plus 2n plus 3 okay so in the first step i found that this loop is executing this many times okay in the second step in step two in step two what it is saying we need to ignore lower order term what is the lower order term we need to find a lower order term so from this equation we what are the terms we have we have terms like n square and n right these are the terms we have now let's say n below each two okay so n square is what four and n is what two so obviously n square is greater than uh, n right so we need to ignore this one so finally our equation will become like 4 n square plus 2 plus 3 right now in step 3 in step 3 in step 3 so in step 3 we have 4 n square 2 plus 3 right in step 3 what we need to do ignore ignore constant value so what are the constant we have four four constant four is a constant two is a constant three is a constant so we need to ignore all this thing right so now we have n square okay so our final uh, final time complexity will we have big o of n square okay so basically let me recap this now basically we need to find the uh, number of iteration of a loop okay then from the number of iteration we need to ignore the lower order terms like this is the lower order term so we need to ignore this okay now we can have the have this formula by ignoring in ignoring this uh, lower order term in step three we need to remove the constant we need to ignore the constant two three four these are the constant right so finally we have big of n square okay let's take another example okay so in example we have like um, in step one in step one i calculated the number of iteration and finally my equation will be uh, let's say uh, 4n plus n 2 into n log n which is base 2 plus 3 okay so this is my new, another example which have 4n plus 2n log n plus 3 okay so this is the step one i i got the um, equation from the uh, from the loop okay now in step two in step two i need to what i need to remove the lower order term so what are the terms we have the terms we have n and log n right n and n 
log n right so if you observe here we have n right and here we have n into log log n right so something is multiplying here okay with n so obviously this value will be bigger than this right so this will be bigger than this so we need to ignore n so finally our equation will be 4 plus 2 n log n plus 3 okay so i i ignored the n value enter okay now in step 3 so in step 3 we need to we need to ignore the constants so what are the constants here 4 2 and 3 these are the constant right so finally we have n log n okay so my final answer will be the time complexity will be the of n log n okay now take another example example 3 let's say i have let's say i have uh, in step 1 i calculated the uh, loop iteration so i found the equation like um, 2 um, let's say 2 square root of n plus 3 log n plus 1 okay this is my step 1 where i calculated the um, iteration number of iteration okay in step 2 in step 2 we need to find the lower order term and we need to ignore okay so from here we have these terms like these are the terms so we have root over of n and we have log n okay okay now we need to find between these two terms who is uh, smaller then we can ignore right so always what i told in the uh, initial initially what i told so as we need to calculate with the asymptotic uh, manner okay so asymptotic manner asymptotic analysis will take always big number okay so here also we need, we need to take the big number okay so let's say uh, my number is like uh, the n value is let's say n is um, 10 to the 9 okay so 10 to the 9 means what the square root of n means what 10 to the power 4.5 right and log n uh, value will be approximately it is uh, i think 30 okay let's say n value is now uh, 10 to the 5 okay so square root of n means what it will be like 10 to the 2.5 right and it is approximately uh, 70 so if you compare both if you compare both who is the big so big is uh, this one right this is the bigger because if you see the value so square root n is bigger than log n right now now we need to ignore square root of n sorry we need to ignore uh, log n right as it is a lower order term so the final equation will be okay, so the final equation will be 2 square root of n plus 3 plus 1 as i ignore this one so now it is not present here now in step 3 just check in the step 3 we need to ignore we need to ignore the constants so here we have 2 3 1 these are the constants so finally the output will be root square root of n so the time complexity will be big of square root of n okay so we hope you understood all this thing uh, uh, so hope you understood uh, uh, how we can calculate the uh, big of annotation so in my last class i have uh, in the video i have added one quiz link so just go through those quiz links and uh, whatever the question is there just try to find the uh, time complexity so those are the basic uh, questions and if you do those things then i think it will be clear for you the time complexity and if you have any doubt maybe you can comment down i will be answering those questions okay so this is about the time complexity <clears throat> now 
now uh, let's look into the space complexity space complexity okay so space complexity also we are going to um, going to use um, big of annotation okay so let's i have one example let's say i have function which takes input n and i have int a int sorry uh, let's say this is float float b then let's say double double c bool d okay so uh, i am assuming that you know all these uh, data types okay so so in uh, in maximum of the language like c plus plus java uh, so maximum of the language uh, the uh, size of this variables uh, the size of this uh, data types are same if if it is not some just check your language okay and uh, try to analyze uh, accordingly so let's say i mean uh, i am considering java so in java this um, uh, the size of this int is 4 byte okay 2 byte float size is also 4 byte okay double size i think 8 byte and bool size is 1 byte okay let's add all this thing so 8 4 8 12 okay 17 okay the size is 17 okay so now uh, now let's say input is this is input okay n is in input so n is let's say 10 okay so if n, when n is 10 do you see any changes of this data type okay so if it if n is 10 so it will be always 4 4 8 1 okay it is always 17 okay plus n is 100 okay so if n is 100 that time also this values are same okay the size are same so it means what these are not these are independent it is not depends on the input okay it is not depends on the input so basically it will it will be we can write like big of 70 it is as we we are going to remove the constants then it will become big of one so this is the constant this is also called constant space okay hope you understood this one let's take uh, another example let's say one function i have which have input n okay now let's say input array i have array one which is size of 10 then let's say float b another array i have input type a2 but this is n the size is n okay now so initially initially what will be the size let's say my n value is n value is 4 okay this is my n value okay so a1 of 10 so it is taking 4 and now i have allocated 10 space okay so it will become what 4 into 10 okay so 40 so float is also 4 we are this this is 4 byte right and a2 this is a2 so this is 4 and we are allocating space 4 okay this is n is 4 so here we have mentioned right so the total space will be 4 into 4 so 16 so now the total value will be 60 okay now let's say i'm increasing the n value let's say i'm increasing to 100 okay now so it is not depending on the n right so it is always 40 it is always 40 okay so it is always 40 and float also 4 always 4 but 
this is depending on the input n okay so 4 into 100 what is the value 4 4 4 okay so if you observe if n is increasing or decreasing then this size is uh, accordingly it is changing okay so it means what it means what it is depending on the this this algorithm is depending on the input value okay so so the space will be as it is depending on the uh, input value so space will be big of n right let's take another example let's take another example let's say i have um int sum okay and let's say this is function where i am taking the input n okay and then i am declaring sum then for loop is going i is going till n okay now i am adding all these value with i okay now if you observe here we are passing n okay let's say n is 4 okay so each and every element is it is, the loop will be four times okay four times it will execute this iteration will be four times and each element will add with this sum some variable okay but if you see the sum is increasing some value is increasing but the size is constant right here we are using four space only four bytes okay but sum is increasing it is not depending on this size it is always allocating four sides okay so so the the it is not depending on the this algorithm is not depending on the input n so it is independent so it is constant space region so space complexity is using constant okay let's take another example let's see uh let's say i have function okay which is taking input n okay and let's say i am i am having int a okay of 10 so i have another variable int b which is a 2d matrix but it is depends on the a and depends on the n okay this input okay let's say <coughs> say n value is 4 okay so it is allocating int is allocating 4 byte and it is allocating 10 so 4 into 10 4 into 10 okay now this one b b is depending on the n depending on the n because this value we are using input value we are using and we are specifying the space for b okay so what it is it, this is 4 and b of 4 and 4 okay so so it is kind of like what we are doing n into n right we are doing n square okay so so here is a constant value we are using but it is as it is depending on the n so it is increasing the value right increasing the value so if you see here 4 into 4 into 4 so the this value is 4 into 16 right let's in future this is changing to 10 n is 10 changing to 10 now this 4 into 10 into 10 this will be same right because it, this is the int where int size okay 4 byte so this is changing so 100 okay so it is kind of n square we are doing so it is n square this is also n square so finally the space complexity for this example will be big o of n square big o of n square okay okay so let's say uh, i have one problem uh, i have one problem statement of which i am unable to solve it okay which i am unable to stop it solve it so for this basically what i can think of so i can think of with uh, some uh, uh, brute force approach or basic approach uh, which may solve in 
like uh, big O of n square time or maybe big O of n q time. Okay, then if we go through this, then maybe there will be some hints or some something will be there which we can which we can like uh, we can uh, reduce it to like big O of n log n time. Okay, then something will be there we can we can reduce further like till uh, like big O of n time. Okay, then till uh, we can we can go to like big O of square root of n. Okay, then we'll go to big O of uh, log n. Okay, then let's say uh, if it is possible, then we can move to constant time. Okay, so first uh, first start with if we are unable to solve that one, first start thinking about this thing. Okay, how we can solve in brute force factors? Then further we can go to and we, we can check and we can uh, reduce to some good uh, time complexity okay so this is my takeaway uh, you can you can think like this okay? so in terms of big o annotation so this is the constant we called okay it means what it will execute in no time okay so before that we can have big o of log n time okay which is greater than this one okay then we can have like big o of uh, maybe uh, square root of n then we can have big o of uh, maybe n yeah then we can have maybe big o of n log n okay then we can have like uh, uh, big o of n square okay then we can have like big o of n cube okay so these are the like it may be something will be there in between but these are the basic thing okay so you can think uh, about all these things whenever we are solving one problem okay so hope you understood this uh, approach and uh, uh, this is the uh, this is the basic concept and uh, the core concept and you can go through go through that quiz link and try to solve those quiz these are the basic thing and if you solve those things then i think it will be clear for you and also in future lecture for each and every problem we are going to calculate space complexity and time complexity by which you can uh, always like uh, it will clear for you more uh, in future so stay tuned uh, uh, thank you for watching this video and see you soon in the next lecture.